Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Bargain Bin, a show featuring speed games all under $20. My name is Midnight Vesper, and I will be your host for this. stuff coming up but do not forget we have an amazing an amazing stack lineup for you all tonight now do not forget though we we are celebrating some amazing amazing stuff uh for today and since we did just end with uh sorry if we do just end awesome games done quick we are going to grab some of the backup runs that will be coming up here in a little bit and uh, we have two of those coming up here in a little bit one is going to be Arkham Asylum, and then after that, we're going to have Eastern Exorcist. But first, we'll be tossing it over to our good buddy, Zik3, about well, grabbing our microphones and looking at some bugs. Zik, how are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Doing not bad. Ready to play some Bugs Life, show Bugs Life off to everybody. This is a fantastic game. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, as you said, this is all about speedruns under $20. And Bugs Life is a great example of that because this game is an incredible speedrun. It's so much fun, and this game's like dirt cheap. Like I, I have tons of copies of this game. I buy them whenever I find them at game stores. They're like six bucks. You can get like complete copies of it. Um, so it's a very easy game to get into. Um, but yeah, so uh, now I am playing on a PS TV, um, which isn't the cheapest device to get but you can play it on a ps2 just fine <clears throat> so um but yeah so if we're all ready then i'm ready to go i believe we are all okay. right then let's uh we'll get started here right when we select ant hill is when uh time begins so um let's get started in three two one go so we get these nice uh scenes from the movie before every single uh, level and this is a bug's life for the playstation one um this game came out on the playstation one and the n64 back in the day uh depending on which version you played it'll look somewhat similar but they are radically different games um the ps1 could just handle more than the n64 could back then so the ps1 has these amazing like voice lines and clips from the movies and the N64 was a much more bare bones game. Uh, a lot of these levels are going to go by pretty fast. This is a pretty uh, fast moving speed run. We already booked through Ant Hill there and we're into tunnels here. So tunnels is a level where it's kind of a straight line. Not really, there's twists and turns, but we're kind of just going straight. But the name of the game is cutting these corners as best as you can. So we're going to be hopping on these walls to make straighter lines and um, Use some of Flick's jumping abilities and abusing the, uh, whoops, I fell there. Uh, abusing some of the geometry to get to, uh, areas that you might need power-ups to get to. Now, uh, unfortunately we don't have any beans this run, but we have grain, and grain is just as good as beans. Flick loves his grain, he'll never stop talking about his grain. Flick's voice lines in this game are just, <laughs> they're fantastic. Um... So I'm going to try a little jump here. I'm going to try and jump on this mushroom. I missed it. That's okay. It's a very difficult jump. That mushroom is very precise. You can jump on it to skip that bouncy shroom, but it's a very tough jump. So you try it, you miss it, you take the bouncy shroom. <clears throat> so now we're going to have rocks falling from the ceiling and these grasshoppers jumping down. Um, everything is kind of random here. So I'm just kind of kind of improvise and work with what I get and try and get to the end as quick as possible. Now, 
Are the grasshopper is like the main villain throughout all of this. It's been a while since I've actually seen the movie. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So the grasshoppers are uh, using the ants to get their food every season, and they're grumpy because we didn't get them food. Um, so this is Thumper. He, uh, if you watched the movie as a kid, Thumper was terrifying, and he makes some beautiful sounds. Wow. That's some good ASMR right there. Some yeah. soothing sounds to sleep to. Very, very soothing, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take that on repeat and just put that on my phone and just let it play all night. Exactly. The best, best relaxation I think I'll ever have. So if you've played this game before, this is probably the level that you remember the most. This is the dandelion level. Uh, we have to ride this dandelion across the riverbed and if we touch the ground, we'll get eaten by a bird. So, this, I, I'm like fairly certain I remember playing this game as a kid and this is where I, this is the furthest thing I can remember. <laughs> but I think if we all kind of remember, if we played a lot of games as kids, you just restarted games many times. I have many games that I can remember like the first two levels of, and I'm like, did I just play the first two levels over and over again until the end of time? I feel like that's when I speed run. <laughs> I mean, it's not far off. <laughs> okay, so we're moving on here to Riverbed Run. Uh, this is where things are going to start getting a little more complex. And uh, we're going to... I'm going to talk about power-ups. So, we have power-ups in this game. Uh, you can see in the bottom right, I have a little mushroom. And um, there are tokens around. I'm going to do a little precise jump here. That's a little, I guess we'll call it a sequence break, a skip, where you need to usually plant a seed to get over that ledge. Um, but so we can find these tokens around the world. Uh, we're going to get a green one here in a second, and the green one will allow me to grow leaf plants. You can see I now have a leaf in the bottom right. And so you're supposed to get, like, all the leaf tokens in this level and all the other tokens so that you can get over these really tall riverbed walls. But... We're going to get the bare minimum possible, um, which will be two. So we're just going to get these two leaf tokens. And instead of growing really tall plants, we're going to kind of abuse the geometry to get over ledges that we really shouldn't be able to. And that will be the first one here, which is less abusing the geometry and more using Flick's butt stomp. Um, kind of tucks his legs up in the air like that and lets him get over ledges that you normally wouldn't be able to. <clears throat> and then we have one final, uh, pick up some grain. Grain is always good. Um, there's one more ledge here and we're going to, I'm going to try a jump here. This is a pretty tough jump, but normally you're supposed to grow a giant leaf plant here, but you can kind of jump off the wall here. This is very finicky. I don't fully understand how this works. There we go. But you kind of use the weirdness of the wall to get extra jumps, and you can just kind of jump up the wall like a Skyrim horse and get up there. <clears throat> now that's a pretty difficult strat. If you were getting into the game, you could always, there's a green leaf token, like, 10 seconds the other direction. You could just go grab the other leaf token and grow the plant and move on. Um, that kind of double wall jump is an extremely difficult strat that doesn't always make sense. So here's our first boss fight. We're gonna fight a bird. So we have to get the super berry, uh, as Flick tells us, it's the super berry, which is kind of another form of power ups. You can get super berries, homing berries, and gold berries. Um, Basically, everything that's not a red berry does the same amount of damage. Uh, they just have different effects. So here's the city, and this city yeah! is the one time in the run where grain is going to matter. Um, there are doors within this level that will only open when you have a certain amount of grain. So there's a 10 grain door, a 20 grain door, and a 30 grain door. And all the enemies in this level drop grain. So we're going to invade the city, uh, take out all the residents of the city, and steal their grain. Um, now we're going to get 20 grain. 
So the reason we're gonna get 20 grain is we can skip the 30 grain door using kind of the butt stomp that I talked about earlier. The butt stomp is very good at getting us over areas that we shouldn't be able to get over. It's a pretty big sequence break. It's nice to not need to get that extra 10 grain. So we're just gonna get the fastest 20 grain that we can find uh, around the city. That fly can live. He was a good bean today. We'll get that daddy long legs. There's a grain in this corner, and then this guy, and this will be our last grain. Fly was good beans, daddy long legs was not well, good beans. He was not a good bean. Mm. So now that we have our 20 grain, um, you can see that the door opens for us, and this is the third area of the city. Uh, so we're just gonna get over here to the uh, 30 grain door, ignoring, oh, I hit that goop, uh, ignoring all the enemies we can. And we're gonna get up to this door. And if we get up way up high here, we can actually just butt stomp right over the top of the door. I need more grain. It's not a very hard jump either. It's not too bad to pull off. And we can get out of here. Nice. So you notice I pause and exit level at the end of every uh, thing. Um, at the end of every level, there's usually like a cutscene or something. But as soon as you hit the end, like, trigger... Uh, so for that, it was finding the circus bugs. And the second you touch one of the circus bugs, you can just exit level. The, the level's been marked as complete, so you don't have to, like, watch the cutscene. So here... I, I feel like the, act, the acting kind of is, you know, is, is missing because of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, in this level, we have to find the other circus bugs. And you'll notice I was doing some pausing there. Um... The circus bugs all talk to you. In these cutscenes, <laughs> I had to listen for the cues. If you pause and unpause the game as soon as their voice lines start, the game just skips the voice line and moves on to the next one. So you can skip all the dialogue in a cutscene by just pause and pausing the game. Wow, so this is the scene. And if you're really good at it, you should just never hear the dialogue. You can kind of hit it the frame it happens and you just never hear dialogue. It makes it really awkward. You're just kind of standing there. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> this weird 10 second cutscene of you staring at another bug. <laughs> so here's the next boss fight. Uh, this is... Oh, I don't remember. Thud. Thud. Yes. Um, and we need to get... There it is. That's a little skip right there. We need to get at least a super berry. But we're going to get the gold berry like that. Uh, cause it's quicker to get the gold berry. Uh, we can't damage him with the red berries. So he's gonna fly back and forth within this can, and we need to hit him each time he goes to the other end. So it's kind of just dodging these random knickknacks rolling around and getting the hits in as quick as you can. I missed that hit. Oh no. There we go. It's hard to hit things when they're off screen. It kinda, the game likes to off screen not my problem so uh sometimes like hitboxes aren't there and stuff if you are just trying to blind throw at stuff but that's thud thud's dead and we can move on to clover forest one of the best levels in the run uh soundtrack is great levels really fun this game has a soundtrack that's honestly way better than it has any right to be i mean this is just a a licensed bugs life ps1 game but they went hard on the soundtrack I can tell. I really appreciate it. Let's see if I get this. Okay. So I got a little skip there. Um, I'm moving around in a cutscene. I shouldn't be able to move right now. And it allows me to uh, get this and get out of the ear while the cutscene finishes. So I get a little head start on leaving that area. And how it works is like, if you've ever watched... Uh, I like to compare it to uh, Spyro the Dragon, pretending that this is a legit and real speedrun. Um, but Spyro the Dragon has the like Nestor skip at the beginning, where it's like, if you jump when you trigger the cutscene, if you're not touching the ground, like it kind of skips it. And it's the same principle. You jump when you talk to Manny, and it allows you to move around in the cutscene. I'm not fully sure why. There's a lot of things in this game that it's like, yeah, that just works. I don't know why, but it works. I need a cannon. What do I feel like that was always a thing with Disney games around this time period? Yeah, and it's actually funny. Like a lot of like 
Disney games around this time period were like kind of made by similar people. Like I know this game and uh, Toy Story 2 were all made by John Burton and the Traveler's Tales team. So you do see a lot of similarities with that sometimes. Uh, okay. Another little cutscene skip there. Um, you get that bird piece last. So the second that you touch it, you can exit level without watching the cutscene that follows that. Uh, normally you're supposed to talk to uh, Manny? No. What's the stick bug's name? Oh god. Mm. I'm a fake bug uh, uh, fan here. <laughs> but you're supposed, help. <laughs> you're supposed to talk to the stick bug and he like gets that piece down for you. But we can use the cannon plant to launch to it. Oh, yes, yes, thank you. So this is the tree. The tree is a slower level. Um, we have to find uh, all of the blueberry scouts and each one, we have a cutscene where Dem comes down and he's like, Dem give Ant the lift. And you can't skip these. I wish we could, but we can't. So it's kind of a slower level where we just kind of climb this tree, trying not to fall off of it and touching each of the blueberry scouts. Uh, I'm gonna move this, yeah. So we're kind of just trying to hug the walls here to uh, get around as quickly as possible and try not falling off the tree. Flick controls really slippery. Like he is really slippery and it is very easy to fall off of uh, ledges. This game, if you played it casually, I like to say this game is a terrible casual playthrough and an incredibly fun speedrun. It's like once you get the controls down, it feels really good. But when you're playing this for the first time, you're like, wow, this feels awful. Just need to get to the if you're aware of the, the whole time. <laughs> Maybe this game predicted speedrunning like 10 years in the future. <laughs> we're ready for it. Yeah. Tim, like if you're aware of the term coyote time, where like you get a little, uh, time to input your jump after you like step off of a ledge. I like to say that this game has negative coyote time. It will like eat your jump if you try and jump even like before you hit the edge. It's very awkward. <clears throat> Which will come into play on the final boss because it's a big platforming section and it's very easy to fall because the jump makes no sense. So that's our last Blueberry Scout. We can uh, just head on up to the bird. Appreciate and... Blueberry power. <laughs> I love all the little voice acting in this game. It's so cheesy, but it's so charming. <laughs> yes. All right. So now we're going to fight Molt. Uh, this is one of my least favorite levels in the game. It's just awful. Uh, we have these ants these little 2d ants in the background which are trying to help you out we have to have a super berry to damage mold but for some reason your ant friends are trying to help you out by throwing red berries at you and if you get hit with a red berry it downgrades your berry power so i'd have to go grow another super berry i don't know why <laughs> they made your allies hurt you but that is a thing so we get under we're like under a leaf right now and you can see this is so that when they throw the red berries at me they get caught on the leaf and they can't hit me and we'll just sit here and have molt tell us that's not nice until he dies hey that's not nice that's not nice okay ant hill part two this is completely RNG. <laughs> this is where runs of this game go to die. Um, so the first thing we need, as Flick will tell us many times, we need to grow a berry shooter. And that's exactly what we need to do. We need to grow a berry shooter. So I'm first going to get a bunch of these leaf tokens to grow my leaf plant. So we can see what the fully uh, powered up leaf plant would look like as I talked about it back in Riverbed. We'll get to see what that actually looks like here because we need it to get the berry shooter power up, which are the yellow tokens, which is basically a plant that, well, it shoots berries. And Hopper is flying around in the top of 
this uh, anthill level. Um, and we need to knock him out of the sky. So normally, there's the upgraded berry shooter, which is really tall, but getting the second berry token is very slow. So we're gonna get the short berry shooter, and we're gonna come up to the highest point of Pride Rock here, and we're gonna point the camera into the sky. Oh, that's really good. And we're gonna hope and pray that these berries hit Hopper. <laughs> You're not supposed to be able to do this, but by kind of manipulating the camera. This is really good, actually. Sometimes you can sit here for like up to a minute of the berries just missing. Oh, nice. Look at that. Oh, she fell back. Oh, wow. Okay, that was really fast. Nice. Nice job. You hit her, hit him a bunch of times, and we can move on to Riverbed Flight. This is a level. This is the level I always say I don't understand how they expected a young child to beat this game. Uh, this You have to fly to the end using Ada here, and as you pick up grain, uh, you get speed boost. It is stupidly fast and stupidly hard to control. There are obstacles everywhere. <laughs> um, once you get the hang of it, it's honestly one of my favorite levels to do. I mean, it's it's a speed run. We're going fast. It feels good. But, uh, holy crap, when you're first playing this game, this level feels impossible. Everything on the ground, all these little pebbles, every bit of them have a hitbox. You can just bonk into everything and get caught. And you're being chased by Hopper right now? Ah. So if you kind of lose your speed, he'll catch up to you and hit you. And it's really unfair. Because he's just set to follow you. So if he gets in front of you, he just rams into you trying to follow you. And he just blocks you and you just die. I forgot there was a character named Hopper in here. And then there like, is? beforehand when you were talking about it, I was like, Hopper? Why, did, why, why is there a Stranger Things reference? And then I went, oh yeah, no. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Good bit flight. Oh, I missed one grain. The grain does, other than that city level, the grain does nothing. Uh, well, and that level gives you the speed boost, but like the amount you get doesn't mean anything. They're just little useless collectibles. So this is the final boss. Uh, there we go. We're going to do a little jump there to skip needing to get power-ups. You're supposed to kind of get a dandelion and get up here to the super berry. Because, as we said, we can't really damage anybody without the super berry. So here's Hopper, and he's going to move through three phases. So first phase is him going to be flying here, and we just have to hit him. Then the second phase is this big platforming section where he's going to hop between... Hop, see? Uh, ah, he's going to hop between it. different platforms, and we have to kind of meet him there and hit him one time at each spot. So there's our first hit, and this is where the level... This gets really tough. <laughs> like I said, Flick is very slippery. And it's very easy to fall here. There we go. There's our next hit. Get to this little Tetris piece. Cliff. Hit him there. And then he'll go to the end. And we can move on to phase three. Which is basically a big climb section. Where again, we have to meet him at certain points to hit him. And we're going to climb to the bird's nest, basically. Up here. Get a little hit there. There, oh, yep. I was just about to say, there are these grasshoppers kind of roaming around here, and they can get you good. Also, these... <laughs> these platforms, if you're not at, like, full running speed, they are, like, just as tall as your jump, and they're honestly a huge pain to get on. So now we're up here to the bird's nest. And we're just gonna wallop on Hopper until the bird comes and eats him. You can see it, it's lurking, it's closing in. Oh yeah. And that is time. Nice. Help me! Help me! And there's our final voice line of the game. <laughs> what a what a what a great line to end the run. <laughs> what, a, what a good way to end the game. <laughs> All right, we'll, uh, we'll yelling, help me, help me. <laughs> just, uh, we'll skip the movie clip so Disney doesn't come after us. <laughs> well, yeah. Thank you very much for showcasing that run. It was super fun. 
Uh, if anyone saw this and were like, oh yeah, because there's a lot of people in chat who were like, I remember this game as a, I remember this game as a kid. Maybe this inspires them to get into speedrunning this game. How would they go about learning more information about the Bugs Life speedrun? Yeah, uh, I fully recommend it. Like, I mean, you saw it's like a 20 minute run. It's so easy to just pick up the game and give it a shot. It's honestly, I've speedrun a dumb amount of games, and this is honestly one of my favorite games to speedrun. Um, there's a Discord out there with lots of information on the uh, PlayStation version, the N64 version. There's lots of helpful people in there. Um, Plywood has a guide out there for the PS1 version, uh, which is what I learned off of, and it's super thorough. It's super helpful. I mean, you can learn in no time just following that. Um, I believe my friend Thermal has a guide for the N64 version out there. He's like the expert on the N64 version. So there's tons of resources out there to uh, check it out. Some of the stuff's just fun to just pick up, learn a trick and do it. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, any other shout outs you'd like to go ahead and say? Um, no, I'm just happy to have been to show off this game. I, <laughs> I love this game so much. Uh, thank you for letting me uh, show it off here on the bargain bin. Well, thank you so much for showcasing that amazing room. Do not forget, we still have a couple extra runs coming up here. But of course, if you ever want to follow what Games and Quick is up to, use exclamation mark links in Twitch chat for all things GDQ. So we have so much coming up. And we're going to take a small break where we get things set for the next run, which is going to be Batman Arkham Asylum. This is a great time to get up, stretch, get some water, all of that. We'll be right back. Alrighty, welcome back to the Bargain Bin, a show about speedrunning games all under twenty dollars. I'm still your host, Midnight Vesper. Couple announcements, real fast. Do not forget that your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel help support Game Zone Quick with with AD or Awesome Game Zone Quick 2020, 2023 costs, including hotel cancellation costs. Please consider subscribing to help support Game Zone Quick. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, hello. How are you, YouTube? Be sure to press the like button on the video and subscribe to our GDQ channel. Also, head on over to twitch.tv slash gamesdonequick if you're interested in looking at our live content starting weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. Now, coming up here in just a minute, as well as our next run, are some awesome Games Done Quick backup runs. These are runs that were potentially could have been shown on screen on, on the main line, but you know issues happen and stuff like that so we i thought i'd give this run and the next run the opportunity to let their runs shine so we have coming up now we have batman arkham asylum with chicken nuggets how are you doing today chicken hello i'm doing great really excited to be here i'm excited to see this run i think this fleet completes the trifecta of all the arkham games for me on this one yeah I, yeah i think so all right, we're good to go. All right, excellent. Um, so if you've played this game before, you might remember there's like a seven minute segment at the beginning where you're literally just walking. Uh, that's boring, so we're not gonna do that. We're gonna jump right into the first fight here. Um, time is gonna start pretty much right now. So this is gonna be pretty heavy here. So we just want to knock these guys down and take round takedowns on them as quickly as possible. Um, hopefully, they'll just kind of let us do that. Perfect. That takes care of that. Um, I'm going to open this vent up real quick for after the fight. And once this electric fence goes down, we're going to knock these two guys down. I'm going to ground take down this guy. And then just punch this guy twice to knock him out. Punch this guy, throw a batarang to lose my combo so I get a faster ground takedown animation, and then take that final guy out. Cool. Good fight. And then I'm going to do something called a trophy dupe here. So I have a mouse wheel that's really fast um, and a button bound to it. So if I spin this as I walk into the trophy, I will get a lot of experience. 10,000, that's really good. So that will be more than enough for all the upgrades we need throughout the run. Um, for now, I'm going to buy the Critical Strikes upgrade. 
That'll help us take people out even faster. And while we have some downtime here, I'll let my commentators introduce themselves. Uh, hey, I'm a Moogle. I do not play... I play Batman games, but not this particular Batman game. He plays the bad ones. Yeah, unfortunately. And I am uh, Jay Games 84 I mainly watch Batman games. And uh, I'm just going to be here to hopefully help um, guide guide everyone through what's happening on the screen throughout this run. Alright, so uh, yeah, Joker has escaped or something. Um, we're trying to figure out what he's up to. Take out every thug that we encounter on the way there. Um, Oracle's going to try to talk to us. Talking is boring, so we're just going to not do that. Um, so we got Zaz in here. He's a bad guy, so we're going to go take him out. But we gotta do it stealthily because he's got a hostage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just go over here. As soon as the game lets us, grapple up here. And we can just chuck a battering at him from here. And that takes care of that. Is that stealth in air like air quotes or Oh that was that was stealth. He didn't see us. Everything was fine. I guess that's true. Um we're gonna Pull another vent off the wall. So this is, uh, Try the radio. we sometimes refer to this game as Ventilation Man Arkham Asylum because you're like the HVAC guy. You're going through all the vents. <laughs> going through the vents, you know, checking the pipes, all that fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah, you know, someone's got to do maintenance on here every once in a while. Might as well be us. Um, if I didn't have enough experience, I could do that trophy too, but I got more than enough, so we're just gonna go right ahead here. Isn't it about like 8,000? Like, that's like the sweet spot you're looking for? Yeah, 8,000 is ideal. I got 10,000, which is great. If you get, um, you can get like even as high as like 20,000 if you're like really good at spinning the mouse wheel, but you don't want to get too much either because basically every time you pick up a trophy, the game lags a little bit. The room is full of so. Or, or sorry, every time you pick up a trophy, a bunch of bats spawn, and if too many bats spawn, then the game will lag a bunch, and that's no good, so. So yeah, 10,000 is a good place to be. Um, so we're going in here. There's like gas or whatever. We're supposed to rescue these guys. Uh, we'll get right on that. I, I do want to take a moment to uh, notice, because chat said it too, that it's nice that you're playing ba a Batman game with uh, a Captain America shirt. As it should be the, <laughs> the last time I believe you were on the bargain, in which case you, you, you showcased Captain America. Yes, yes I did. Yeah, I uh, I did not plan this outfit, I'm not going to lie, but it happens. <laughs> what can I say? I like Marvel and DC. It's good to like both. Yeah. All right, so here we've got our first boss fight. Uh, this is the Beta Titan. There will be other Titans later, but they didn't quite finish the formula yet, so this one's a little messed up um we're just gonna let him tire himself out just yeah, you need to watch uh, that right hook yeah yeah keep the guard up oh no went with the left all the time yeah all right he should be he should be he should be tiring himself out any second now he should try and try and fight back and now it'll be fine any second now uh-oh got a little tight here um Cool, there we go. Nailed it. That looks kind of close to me. Yeah, I was no. scared. Yeah, same. So uh, so what was actually happening there was basically this fight's normally just on a timer. Like, he doesn't have a health bar or anything. Um, but since he's the tutorial boss, if you're about to die, the game just, like, ends it for you. Because they don't want you to die. You can still die on hard, though. So if you're, if you're running on hard or normal or anything, you got to be a little careful. But on easy there pretty generous about that. Well, that's Some more nice. experience here, just because we can. We don't really need it, but you're just waiting for dialogue here. Got 2,000 experience, that's pretty good. It's a lot easier to dupe trophies in vents than ones that are just like sitting on the ground, which is why I got 10,000 on the other one and only 2,000 on that one. First try, nice. Destroying those cameras doesn't do anything. It's just fun. There's a lot of waiting. Oracle doesn't know what's going on. We're not going to tell her, because why would we? That sounds like something Batman would just do, yeah. Yeah. It's like, I'll, I'll update you when when I feel like it. 
Only when it's like a convenience for me. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> oh, just fight here. They throw a lot of these like two person fights at us that are all just the same. Just go around, take down a guy and then punch the other guy. Um, here's a fun little strance. So we're going to jump in here and then that will allow us to start scanning this while we're talking to Oracle. And then once again, we're just going to interrupt Oracle and tell her what's going on. And we just get to leave. Um, so now I can see uh, booze trails in the air because that makes sense. Um, and that's how we're going to follow one of the bad guys who took Commissioner Gordon captive. Not Commissioner Gordon. We also already know where he is, so we're not actually going to look at that because it's kind of annoying, to be honest. <laughs> All right. Uh, Harley Quinn's here. She dropped an elevator on us, so unfortunately we can't take the elevator. We got to climb up here. Doing some good old fashioned parkour. Break some more vents. There's a uh, there's a little bit of a skip here. It's a pretty small one, but basically instead of just shimmying all the way across this thing in front of me, I'm going to try to jump over here. There we go. Nice. Yeah, that saves some amount of time. I forget how much. <laughs> yeah, at least three seconds. Saves time. Yeah. Quite a few. Saves seconds. Alright, here's the first, like, big fight. So this is where it's going to be obvious that crits are useful, because with critical strikes, you basically just punch someone twice and they're done. So, yeah, that's it. We win. Yeah, with this game running on, like, when you're running on easy, like, you can kind of just get away with just punching the guy once and he'll just fall over and get knocked out. Yeah, exactly. On hard, you uh, basically just ground takedown spam everybody. But, yeah, on easy, you just punch them over and over again. All right, so uh, guns are dangerous. We all know that. So uh, we're going to we're gonna be a little bit careful here. Yep. This is where Matt Reeves got his um, inspiration for the hallway scene in the Batman. Yeah. All right, so we did that completely carefully and stealthily. You're stealth. We're not even going to bother even know with that Batman guy there. Was on screen. Yeah. This guy's we have to actually take out, so we're gonna work on that. So, this guy's easy, just do a ground takedown. And we get to do the one and only ledge takedown of the run here. And that alerts the last guy who will ideally come to us. Perfect, here we go. And then we just knock him off the ladder here. While we're waiting for some dialogue, we'll run over here to trigger something. And more guys are going to spawn in as I do this for fun and also to skip the cutscene a little bit faster. All right, so throw one at this guy and then this guy. This guy gets knocked down. Everyone else gets distracted. Throw one at this guy. And he is clueless. He's sure it came from over there. I feel like when we, went to the, when we went to the scene pri uh, prior with Batman throwing fists in the air. I feel like that's exactly how Batman would just dance in general. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you can cancel the animation of grabbing ladders, and it's funny. Um. All right, so there is a skip you could do here to skip a bunch of the dialogue that's about to happen. But unfortunately, there is a very small chance that it will soft lock the game. So we are not going to do that. Instead, we're just going to sit here and wait. Um, I don't know if there's anything the hosts want to talk about right now, but now's a good time for it if there is. Yeah, I can always mention that uh, unapologetically, Black and Fast is coming up on February 11th, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you tune in for this celebration of Black Joy and speedrunning. And speaking of events in February, do not forget that Frost Fatals, an event by Frame Fatals, is coming up on February 26th. To see more information about this all-women speedrunning event, you can visit gamesdonequick.com slash framefatals. Alright, so fun fact, you can scan that riddle from over here. I'm going to try to get this riddle in just for style points. Nice, we got it.
Now that this guy's opened the door for us, we can get out of here. There was a massacre. As soon as his invisible wall gets out of our way, takes a little bit of a second there. Oh, you can cancel the animation of opening doors, and I nailed that one. That's like a frame perfect trick, but it's 30 FPS, so it's not that crazy. We apologize for this interruption to our regular broadcast. Jack Ryder is live like, on that one. I was gonna say scanning the, these like riddles and stuff is just like since chickens ran like 100 percent and stuff, it's just me muscle memory at this point for him. So yeah, for for Hundo, obviously you need to get everything, and then uh, also no major skips. You can't trophy dupe, so you have to actually do extra stuff for experience. And there's plenty of things that are just free while you're waiting. So I just keep doing them because there's no reason not to. All right, we are finally outside. Here is the island. Uh, just glide off this way. So there's some thugs attacking our car right now. Uh, we don't take kindly to that, so we're going to go beat them up. And there might be like a story reason for that or something, but that's all I care about. All anyone should care about. Yeah. Don't, don't mess with another man's car. Right, before we can leave, we got to take these guys out. So this one's kind of fun. We're just battering that guy. Punch that guy. Ground takedown. Nice. Yeah, there's our car. Is it a car or a mobile? Um, yes. I like how yeah, that was. Good fight. I like how Go that ahead. mobile looks like the uh, Batman and Robin one. Does it? Yeah, it does. Huh. I guess a little bit. All right, so now we have the explosive gel, and this is where things start getting really interesting because this is probably the most broken gadget. Looks like we can it use it to do lots of interesting things. The um, first, there's the intended usage of blowing stuff up. I need to isolate a trail in the crime scene around it's going to dive roll into that explosion so it doesn't stop us. You can cancel doors with it. Um, you can also do this thing called uh, getting corner storage that I just did. Um, basically, the next time I aim the battering, um, Batman will think that he's in a corner, but not actually be in a corner. And then if I throw the battering in that state, he just kind of gets launched somewhere. Um, it's actually quite convenient. So we're going to I'll give you a little sample of that right up here. Um, there's a wall we're supposed to blow up to get inside this building. But instead of doing that, we're just going to go past it. Gonna find the right spot here. All right, now we're gonna do medical skip. Uh, J Games, if you could elaborate. Yep. So, you're in normal gameplay. You uh, go into the medical facility which you're in. You have to save some doctors, and basically it sends you on a, on a bit of, bit of a travel around the, the facility. We're not going to do that. Instead, as Chicken's doing now, we've zipped out of bounds, and now he's going to all go down, and he should be looking for a ledge to grab. There's no ledge. It's a there's just nope. a checkpoint in midair, and we hit that. My there. bad. No worries. I'm reading the wrong bit. Uh, so we nailed that. We just skipped the whole medical building, basically. <laughs> um, some plot happened, I guess. Not important. Um, we're just going this way because the game says so. <laughs> I, it's interesting that you skipped the medical part because earlier chat was talking about, like, you know, medical stuff or healing for Batman. And they mentioned that that Bruce Wayne fella probably has a good way to get some really good insurance. Probably, yeah. All right, so uh, Gordon's in some trouble here. Let's uh, see if we can help him out. I hope he's okay. I'm sure he's fine. You okay, dude? Just having a nap. Yeah, he's fine. He's definitely not dead. Uh oh. I'm sorry, Jim. Batman's just like poking him in the eyes now. That's kind of rude. <laughs> well, anyway. Moving on. Oh. That's in the chat. Gonna zip over here. Get that snapshot of Scarecrow standing in the hallway there. 
It's always fun. Scarecrow's in this game, by the way, in case you were wondering. <laughs> um, and we're definitely not hallucinating right now. Father should have stood up to his son. Like a man. So, uh, I looking through eternal darkness. Some some things are happening right now. Mom? <laughs> They're just going to be in the third body bag. Oh, that scared me. It's a scary guy. Sounds like he's like some sort of scarecrow, if you ask me. Yeah. Anyway, see you later. I'm going to go straight to this thing. Uh, normally, scarecrow's like standing here in the middle, and he's huge, but he's just not. And uh, you're never gonna see him again. <laughs> yeah, it transcended physical hurt. forms, and he's out of the game. So wave goodbye to Scarecrow, everyone. Yeah. Bye, Scarecrow. There's, there's supposed to be two more Scarecrow segments, but we can skip both of them. So, yeah. All right, back over here. Oh, what do you know? It was just some random guy. Cool. What random guy? Who cares? Anyway. He's fine. Yeah. I won't show me. Sometimes the detective mode. Will... Oh, there we go. Oh, he's dead. Oh. He's not fine. Oh, no. It's not Gordon, so it's fine. Yeah. You could hear it in the glee in Batman's voice. Alright, so. Got a couple small zips to do here. Um, Gordon's here, and he's not dead, so we're gonna rescue him. With some more ventilation, as always. Uh, so this room, you're supposed to do stealthily. You're not supposed to be seen by anyone or even take anybody out, but if you're fast enough, then it just kind of works out. Um, we're also gonna do a little bit of a shortcut here. Is the venting part of this game um, why Among Us happened? Probably. I'm sure you can draw a direct line somewhere. Yeah. Right, so we're going to do a zip here. Hopefully it works. Nice. Just started doing that like, what, two weeks ago? But that strat was found like two years ago. Uh, here's Bane, by the way. He was in here or something. Um, we're gonna fight him, and how you fight him is you kind of just let him slam into you. And then, yeah. This fight on hard is like a disaster. It takes so much longer and so much more effort, but on easy, you just punch him three times and it takes out one of his health bars. Oh. Yeah, hey, that worked out. This is like the gimmick for like the whole game. Your boss fights are essentially just Titan fights. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, this is, Bane is, did, like, the original Titan, I guess. And then there's going to be all the other Titans. It's going to be a bit of a pattern. Whoops. All right, that was a good Bane fight. Just completely takes care of him. Everyone's a little concerned about what's happening because the place is collapsing. Uh, we're just going to leave, though, as we always do. As soon as this cutscene skips. Maybe. Think... Okay, there we go. <laughs> that was long. We're not going to talk about how earlier Batman just dive kicked right onto Harley Quinn. Like, at least like two stories in the air with glass. That's fine. He's fine. We'll see her later. Okay, good. <laughs> Alright, so uh, what we're supposed to do right now is go to the Batcave to like learn some stuff. There's a bat cave on the island, I guess. Um, but I don't feel like it, so we're just not going to go there. Instead, I'm going to do this cool zip off of this tree. I once saved an unfortunate inmate from leaping off into the rocks below. I found a cave. There we go. Over the years, the number of and those guys are none the wiser that I'm over here. Away from home. Uh, so when you go to the bat cave, you're supposed to get the bat claw which is a very useful gadget um and normally you need it to get into the mansion which is the next building we're going to 
but through a series of nonsense, we're just gonna not need the backlog. <laughs> Uh, Moogle, if you want to elaborate on that, go ahead. Oh, um, all right. So there's like, we're going to go in this building over here, but like the second scarecrow, like gimmick area is over here and you need the, um, shoot, I'm sorry. Um, I'm good. So there's like a vent and the, the reason why you can like get through the building is through by pulling the vent off of the, uh, with the, with the back claw, like that that takes you to the like scarecrow section and stuff but we're gonna skip that later anyways so pause it so the game loads in um and now we're kind of out of bounds so we're just gonna run over this door and once i go through it we will be in something called double out of bounds um and all that means is that i have to reload checkpoint fun fact if you have the steam version or the original console version of this game you can't reload checkpoint the like pause menu just like breaks which is really cool um so instead you either force quit the game or you just like wait a minute and a half uh, for batman to like fall and die and then you can continue uh we're gonna buy some more upgrades right now we're gonna buy the double batarangs the triple batarangs and the remote control batarang which is the worst and most important gadget in the run <laughs> they certainly um, refine Zaz. that in future games yeah Zaz, he's back um we're just gonna throw one of these at him because we can it's been a while since i've played this is there like a lore reason how he got like got out of of like the handcuffs or whatever because didn't he like knock him out earlier yeah um basically joker has taken over everything so he got zaz out I pretty much all the like guards and stuff we interacted with earlier are dead so yeah that was not a good fight random riddler things we can grab while we're waiting here There we go. So when, um, with this being PC, and I sometimes ask this, like, is it better to do controller? Is it better to do keyboard mouse or a hybrid for the speed run? Uh, for this game specifically, it's a lot of preference. Actually, hang on, I gotta focus on this real quick. So uh, we're kind of stuck in here because we didn't come in here the intended way. So I gotta do some shenanigans here real quick to get us out. Um, and you'll get to witness just how slow this gadget is. <laughs> Um, so there's normally a bell up here. Uh, it's not there. Don't worry about it. I'm going to try to hit this. There we go. Just time. There it is. So you, so you, it's there all along. I was waiting yeah. for it to show up. Yeah. Um, so as I was saying, um, for this game specifically, it's mostly preference. There's a couple things where like turning the camera is a little nicer with a mouse, obviously, but... For the most part, I play the game almost exclusively on controller just because like back in the day, I played this on PS3. So it's just what I'm used to. Um, and I think the world record holder also plays primarily on controller. Um, the later games in the series, there's a lot more uh, keyboard usage because the gliding is just like objectively better on keyboard and mouse. And that's a much bigger part of the later games. But yeah, for this one, it's mostly preference. Um, we're going to rescue the warden of this place because I guess we're supposed to rescue people or like a superhero or something. I don't know. That man's a superhero? Allegedly. Um, here's some thugs. You're supposed to fight them, but you can just not. So see you later. It's kind of a recurring theme in this game. <laughs> um, here's a fun little zip. So if you jam yourself into a corner and do a zip, you can kind of just get launched up in the air. So we're going to showcase that here. Like that. And then there's a bunch of guys here. We're just going to glide right past them into the door. That takes care of that. We are now in the penitentiary, which is kind of a weird building. There's a couple of zips we can do on the way in, but then it's a lot of intended gameplay because unfortunately the doors in this building are all like automatic. So you can't just like interact with them from out of bounds and have things work. So we mostly have to play by the rules here. But 
Still got a couple of fun things we can do. Like, for example, once this opens, we can zip to the next door. And then to the next one. Keep our storage for one more zip. I mean, the, the doors they're specifically on about are the ones that here, because they have to scan you through. And if you get out of bounds and get on the wrong side of them, you can't do anything to get them open. I think I think they do open. It's just that the wrong side will still be loaded, and there's no way to load the correct side. That's how I remember it. Um, which was shaking this game or something else? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, Shaken's gonna obtain the cryographic sequencer, and now since he has that, he is just gonna get like the back claw. Because that's just how this game works, or something. Yeah, the the warden had a spare back claw, so we just we have one now. So like skipping the back cave, like made everything way convenient, way 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 more convenient. Yeah, it all sorted itself out. Right, we're gonna buy two more upgrades. We're gonna buy the range upgrade and the power upgrade for this thing. So now we can hack things from further away, and we can hack them more easily. So that is a win. Uh, so there's a little cutscene supposed to play here with Ivy. Uh, we skipped it, so things get a little goofy. Hello, Ivy's hair. Stop! Stop! Batman, please! <laughs> if you've got help, I think... What? Great. There's nothing on toward that. That's normal. I have no idea why that happens, but it does. <laughs> Surprise! This is a fun little what? fight. These guys are all trying to get guns, but they're not going to. It takes them a really long time to open the gun cabinets. Oh, that guy got a gun. But not for very long. And then these guys are all stacked up. If you get lucky, you can actually um, one strike and hit two thugs. But it's like pure luck, so it usually doesn't happen. Hack this thing from all the way back here, which we wouldn't be able to do without the range upgrade. There we go. Those hacks are uh, completely random, by the way. It's a common question, is if they're like predetermined or not. Sadly, they are random. I wish they were predetermined. It'd be so much easier. Uh, these guys exist. I guess I didn't really acknowledge them. Uh, they jump on you and are just kind of annoying until you do a ground takedown. So ground takedowns we do. Right here, there's some guards we have to rescue. Um, they are hanging above electrified water, which kills them if they touch it. So we gotta turn off the electricity first. That device is that a Nintendo Switch? Um, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> no, it's a Steam Deck. <laughs> yeah, that's what we <laughs> So I'm just going to say it's a runs, Game Gear. It definitely runs Linux. Time for me to go uh, fun fact, if you hack that door thing before you're supposed to, you just get stuck in here. So don't do that. All right, we got 30 seconds to let these guys out. We're going to run out of time here. Oh, no. Ooh, that was a close one. Too close to right. shaving Ivy's hair, that was. <laughs> If you, uh, if you do it right, you can get this thing to start scanning and then finish talking to the guards and then get back to it before it finishes and you can basically one cycle the door, but I did not do it right. There's a riddle you can scan. I did not get it. All right, we're finally done playing games in here. We're gonna actually go get Harley. So there's a, you're supposed to climb up above here and hack something, but there's a little gap in the floor. So we're just going to hack through that as you do. And then I'm going to do a cinematic gadget throw before this little thing plays out. So I have control of Batman during it. It's a nice little optimization. I kind of wasted it, but that's okay. All right, this fight, this fight's pretty weird. So... 
basically these floors will like electrify. Um, so we want to, what do we want to do? We want to take all these guys out and then we want these guys to get on here before it starts electrifying. Cause they're all going to try to run away, but we want to keep them here so that they get taken out. Right. And then we can try to get the next wave of guys in here. So uh, with all the glitches that I've noticed with all the skips and all that, how was all this discovered? Was it just like done through like a task or because it's PC that it was, you know, looked at internally? It's it was really just a lot of trial and error, like a lot of people trying a lot of things over a long period of time. There's there's been very there's not really any task work for this game because there's just not really a way to do it for this console generation. Um, not that I know of anyway, and we've only like just recently started digging into how the game actually works internally. So a lot of this stuff was at least the like zips and stuff had been discovered long before that. So we are done with Harley. Um, we are now heading to the botanical gardens where, um, Joker's doing some science experiments or something. Just a little garden. Yeah. Go way out of here, and then we've got a fun uh, series of zips. Starting with storage on this. There's one more of these guys. They'll pop out of the grate here, but instead of fighting them, we can just yoink them and then leave ideally cool if you're not fast enough you will have to take the guy out um this is a fun zip to set up because you just kick this guy and then zip it's like really convenient that they placed him right there cool make our way through here there's definitely like a lot of things in this game where it's like you do one specific thing and then like it's like the perfect spot to zip in yeah the the it's it's like they knew you know <laughs> clearly intentional <laughs> yeah Keep over that whole area um these guys will come after me but it doesn't matter they're just gonna i'm technically out of that area now so they can't they can't get to me and they may be lunatics so they're very polite yeah This is the gardens. Got a couple skips in here that we can do. I should pick up Harley Quinn's trail. First, we gotta get inside. Where are these guys? Got them both with the electric fence. Nice. All right, so here's the predator room. Um, it's optional, so we're not gonna do it. All these guys with guns just does not matter. Okay, so you're supposed to shut off some electricity in here and then so that you can actually get across this electrified water. But if you stand right here, there's no electricity, so you can just set up a zip here. It's another it's another very convenient thing where it's like if that wasn't there, we wouldn't have a way to zip past all this. Not that I know of anyway. Well, that's how electricity works, so yeah, everyone write that down. Yeah, electricity just doesn't go in the corner sometimes. Yeah. Corners it's are like, always safe. If we didn't do that, we'd have to go through all these like vents and stuff, and there's this like really awkward room, and it would take forever. So we just sidestepped all of that. Um, here we have another incredible stealth room where we're totally gonna stealth it by the rules. So there's a guy up at the top, and we're supposed to take him out first because if we take out anybody else, then like they'll know and they'll kill the hostages. But um, it turns out. If you just go fast, that doesn't really matter. So fast we go. And there we go. And then there's just one last guy who has no idea what's going on. Poor guy. And we're just going to yoink him over the ledge here into the bottomless pit. He's fine. There was pillows at the bottom. Yeah, of course. Um, 
The entrance is hidden here for the secret lab that we're going to enter. I did see a good question in chat uh, in terms of we were talking about the zips and all of that. Um, are they hard to learn or hard to do? Because they, you're just making them look easy. Yeah, so getting storage t takes a while to get the hang of. It's just like a matter of timing the buttons, but it takes a while to get the hang of it. The actual zips themselves are fairly straightforward once you've gotten the hang of that. Sorry. Um, whoops. Uh oh. No, take this guy out. Okay. Ah, I messed this up. Hang on. All right, we're going to have to improvise here. Uh, so you're supposed to do cool gel strats to take out both the titans, but I uh, did not do it right, so we're going to have to just rodeo them instead. Yeah, the, uh, the tech in this game is not too complicated, at least in principle. Obviously, like, doing all the skips correctly in a run is quite a challenge. Again, there's guides, guides for all this on speedrun.com, so if anyone is interested, just go there, go into the resources section, everything's listed. And it is just a case of practicing, especially yeah. with the learning the timing on the zips. All the storage, more than the zips. Alright, it's gonna charge into me here. Oh, that's weird. Usually when they charge into the canisters here, it blows them up, but that's okay, because I'll just blow them up as I blow him up. That's there rude. we go. All right, now we hack this thing. I do like how in certain angles, it looks like Batman's cape has been torn. Yeah, it has been. Oh, it has the, been? Okay. Um, the yeah. suit gets damaged over the course of the game. I'm going to need something which is a really cool detail. Game gets loud. No. Oh yeah, so uh, there's gonna be a plane, and as we all know, planes are pretty loud, so yeah. <laughs> Sounds pretty plain. Uh, the reason I dropped into that pit there is because there's normally a little animation where he like taps on his arm and calls the plane, but if you just drop into the pit at the right time and grapple out, then it skips that. Yeah, Batman just kind of recklessly flies his plane into this building, but it's fine. Nobody got hurt that we know of. Yeah, he literally has glass fly at him. You know, just so you can get this uh, line launcher. Yeah. There was no other way of doing it. Yeah, it, it had to be done. I feel like that would be a pretty massive insurance claim. But I feel like Batman has a good friend that's a millionaire in Gotham that would probably help with that. Probably, yeah. I'm sure he knows some people. Yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty well connected, I think. Yeah. All right, so uh, as you can see, the line launcher is pretty useful. It is significantly faster than running for long distances in a straight line. For like this hallway, it wouldn't be. I think it's slower if you like did it here, but for any like longer hallways, it's great. Um, so we're gonna do a zip here to get past this stuff. Perfect. Uh, so now we're going to set up a long chain of zips. That's pretty important. Um, so we're getting storage there, and then... Okay, cool. Almost messed that up. So, like, Ivy's kind of mad at us for something. I don't know why. We didn't even talk to her. Like, I don't know what her deal is, but, uh... Well, Ivy also has to make now. And that messed up everything. So there's going to be plants everywhere now that are going to be a minor inconvenience. I mean, could could Ivy just be mad because of her hair? The pod appears to contain similar spores to the ones Ivy used to attack Gotham I mean, you would be pretty year. mad one if your hair just sort of floating off. Yeah. I'd be pretty livid about that. Thing. I'd actually just like some hair again. Yeah, so what you're supposed to do now is you're supposed to go talk to um, one of the guards to find out where Killer Croc's lair is, and then you're supposed to go through the intensive treatment building to get to Killer Croc's lair. Um, but we're just not going to do any of that, and we're just going to go straight there. Because if you go through intensive treatment, you'll have to deal with Scarecrow again, and that's boring. We right, didn't so... catch the game, so... <laughs> yeah. Alright, we're going to set up this zip here. Game gets a little messed up, but it's okay. It's all part of the plan. 
We get up here. And that puts us on the wrong side of this door. And then I just have to cancel it. Perfect, got it first try. And we can move right along. Uh, Shaken essentially like went through that room like backwards because you're supposed to leave from there, right? Yeah. Um, Oracle informs us that we're running out of time, so we better get moving here. <laughs> All right, so this, this is Killer Croc's lair. Um, he lives in a sewer and he's just kind of locked in here. I don't really know how they got him down here or how they like get him out, but sometimes they get him out. Seems like a bit of a hassle. But, close to Crocs. Yeah, so we're gonna zip in here to skip a cutscene. We don't like completely skip it per se, but like we just watch it later. And then we're already all the way up here. And remember, we need to move as slowly as possible. So we're gonna go super slow here for sure. So there are five uh, spores in here that are things that we need to like cure Titan. So we're trying to get all of those. Um, you can cancel the animation that I'm doing right now, but I messed it up. It's a little bit faster if you do. All right, hop over here. And since I already know where they all are, just go straight to them without having to follow this. There's like the thing in the on the left side of the screen showing how far away you are from the closest one. All right, Crack's gonna pop up here. Um, if this was like a world record attempt, there's a zip I could attempt here that goes like past Croc, but that's pretty risky. If you, if anything goes wrong with it, you die. And if you die, you lose your storage and then you can't do the cool zips in here. So we're not gonna worry about that. It's like a 50-50 of him dying at that point. Crocker either gets you or he doesn't. Yeah, today, today specifically, it's like, like I got it once, so. <laughs> Out of like, I don't even know how many attempts. It was pretty brutal. Just like completely forgot how to do it. Um, we're going to troll Croc a little bit like we did there. Just kind of go past him sometimes. And another one here. See ya. He can't really turn around, so you're free to just kind of go around him. Um, he's going to destroy these platforms, which is a minor inconvenience. Oh, there we go. I got the cancel. So yeah, instead of like picking it up, he's just kind of standing here awkwardly with the gel out. <laughs> he's just posing. Yeah. Over here. Learning the uh, layout of this area is like super weird. I what I ended up doing is I just like drew a map of it. I don't look at the map ever, but just like the act of like going into every crevice and drawing the map helped me out a lot. So. If you're running this game and you're having trouble with, like, getting lost in here, that seems like a good idea. I'm here to Croc again. Get him out of our way so we can get this last spore. Oh, got another cancel. Nice. Two out of five is acceptable. I was trying to think of a game that you don't fight Killer Croc in a sewer and Origins was one of them. Yeah, you fight him in the prison yard instead. I know in Dark Tomorrow you fight him in like the sewer of Arkham Asylum or the basement, but it's like flooded, so it's practically a sewer. Um, so instead of going all the way back, we're just gonna zip, and now we're like pretty close to the exit. It's pretty convenient. Um, we're gonna zip again and again. And we are, like, at the exit here. Just make sure Croc doesn't jump us when I line launch. Cool. These zips are something else. Sorry? These zips are something else. Yeah. Uh, so the game's a little confused now, because 
We uh, there's supposed to be this like chase sequence through all these hallways, but we are already through it. Um, so yeah, see you later, Croc. That was a good break call. <laughs> He's just taking a nap. It's fine. Yeah. He'll be back. Yeah, like he says, he'll find us. All right. So now we have to actually go to the back cave. So. That's where we're headed now. Wait. Got a good line launch here. Um, there's a zip I'm gonna try to do in the bat cave. So we gotta get some storage here. This out of our way. Uh, once we get into the bat cave, we will get the ultra bat claw gadget, which is great because uh, it's pretty useful, and we also, like, actually need it to beat the game. Uh, you can't defeat the final boss without it. We've this tried. Was, this is such a great <laughs> design as well, because it's just, like, three back claws all duct taped together. Yeah, if you think if you think one back claw is pretty good, imagine three. That's, there it is, the ultra back claw. It's, like, so janky, too. I love it. All right, so uh, this is Bat Cave Skip. Um, conveniently, we are in the perfect position to start it right after that cutscene. All right, now things get a little hairy. I gotta try to glide off here and then going somewhere specific here. Oh, that was close. All right. So we're gonna bounce off this wall, bounce, bounce again. Perfect. And glide until when these rock formations go to sight, turn. And if all went well, I should be in that hallway outside of the bat cave. Like outside, like in the normal part of the sewer. Um, there's thugs here. There's a floating gun. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> this scarecrow is back and he has a gun. Right, he still has no body though. Right here. And we have to reload imagine because that was a double out of bounds. Go ahead. Just imagine being a person that's just, you know, you're just walking around, and the next thing you know, you're just kind of floating and out of bounds. That's... All right, so we're back in this uh, parkour room. Um, you're supposed to parkour, but instead we're just gonna zip. Unfortunately, nothing that simple. I'm at the main sewer junction. Brings us most of the way up. Why? What's and we just have to climb for this last little bit. Over here, Oracle's telling us something about control rooms. Don't worry about it. We're not gonna, we're not gonna control any rooms. It won't reach Gotham. Pull this down. While those guys are trying to figure out what just happened, I'll get some storage for the next skip. And those guys will take a pretty nasty tumble. It's okay, baby. I never hurt, hurt anybody. Yeah, no, never. Alright, those guys will be out of our way for now. And we're going to set up the sewer skip. So this skips like this whole area, but mainly it skips the um the sewer titan fight. Which is super annoying and like kinda sketchy, so we're just we're not gonna do it. I mean, it's pretty. It's a pretty long fight. Yeah. Do you fight like three waves of enemies and like what? Two titans or something? Three titans? One titan. Oh my god. But it just it just takes forever, and uh, the strat is kind of terrible, but it's really fast. Um. So for some reason, I had to drop down and then grapple back up again to do this. There we go. And this takes us right over to the exit. Yeah, tricking out to drop back down there because the game will not let you um, climb up the elevator because in normal gameplay it's not there. Yeah, the elevator is supposed to be dropped before you do any of that. Alright, so apparently Ivy's getting stronger, so I guess we better go do something about that. Uh, fun fact, I could actually go fight Joker right now and technically beat the game, but if you do that, the like final cutscene and credits don't play out correctly and you get stuck in kind of a bug game state. So for the any percent run, we have to fight Ivy first. 
Oh, that's where we're going right now. It's a fun little movement through this hallway. Do we have to fight Heart, or uh, do we have to fight Ivy and then Ivy's hair, or do we fight both together? Ivy and then what, sorry? Ivy's hair. Oh yes. Um. Yeah, we'll do we'll do both. Okay. There's it's a two phase fight, so presumably phase two is her hair. Gotcha. Here's a fun little strant. You just jump over that. There's also a way to like line launch over it if you're having a lot of trouble with that jump, but I think once you learn the jump, it's actually easier. Come and see. All right. So best thing to do here is grapple up to this ledge and then line launch across. There's a bunch of plants that are gonna try to kill you, but you can you don't have to worry too much about them. On hard, you'd have to be a lot more careful, but. Easy is easy. Wasn't supposed to stun there, but that's okay. There's a riddle we can scan here to I'm refill our health a little bit. Um, line launching here skips a cutscene with these two guards. Because Ivy, like, hypnotized the guards or something. All right, so Ivy fight. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna alternate throwing regular batterings with the multi-battering because they're technically two separate gadgets, so it's a little bit faster to spam them that way. And then also I'm gonna wait for her to grab me or to try to grab me and I'm gonna throw the battering just before that happens. And she like opens her little pod thing and is vulnerable, which gives me the perfect opportunity to hit her. Perfect. If Ivy didn't like gloat at you while she grabbed you with her vines, this fight would take significantly longer. Yeah. Oh, I threw that too early. I got three out of four though. That's really good. You cannot be Mother Nature. I mean, those is kind of tricky. I never really uh, figured it out. I just kind of wing it, and sometimes I get it. <laughs> All right, so that's phase one done a lot faster than you're supposed to finish phase one. Uh, phase two, we could try to abuse that again, but there's also thugs in the mix and she like puts her vines into more parts of the level. So it's a little trickier to use consistently. So I tend to just stick to spamming batterings. Tends to work out okay. I need help here, boys. You can do like the same strat on like the other difficulties, but it, like obviously you take more health and she has more health, or you take more damage and she also has more health, so it's not really worth it. Yeah, yeah. It's very easy to accidentally die while you're trying to do that on hard. Ooh. You also gotta be a little careful here because she'll hit, she'll like shoot, I don't know, 20 of these things, 10 of them. And they can do a lot of damage if you let them hit you. Almost done here. Just a couple more. There we go. All right. And with that out of the way, now all that's left is to go defeat Joker. So he is off this way. Joker's so nice to have like fireworks and stuff so you know where to go. Yeah. Gotta make sure everyone knows where the party's at. You won't want to be a pooper or nothing. Or a party pooper. <laughs> Alright, so there's these guys at the entrance. Um, they're gonna check the guest list, make sure we're on it, you know. All the, all the usual stuff. Uh, but we're in a bit of a hurry, so we're just gonna find our own way in. Uh, yep, there we go. Um, I'm gonna do strat here where I spam the the um, cinematic gadget throw, and now I have control of Batman in this sequence, which you're not supposed to have, so I can just line launch past all that. Go straight to the finale here. So before we fight Joker, we have to fight two Titans and a whole bunch of guys. We only have to take the Titans out. The, other, the guys are kind of just incidental. Um, this fight's really annoying. There's a lot of RNG, but we'll try to make it happen. All right, that guy charged me, that's good. 
Oh. Is that guy gonna charge me? Okay. This is a little tight. All right, I need to wait for this guy on the ground to get up or to start getting up. Whoops. So I want to knock everybody down and then put explosive gel down. And then that knocks all the guys over again and does damage to the Titans. Put more down, do more damage to the guys and the Titans. Try to get this guy down real quick so we can do another wave. This is essentially what he was trying to do in the garden fight. Well, obviously I got a bit messed up. It's going quite well so far. Yeah, this yeah. is really good. This fight can be tricky because if, a, if an enemy hits you while you're spraying the the, uh, the gel and it doesn't nice. finish the animation, it just like completely goes away and it's really annoying. Yeah, it's like it's on the ground, it's done, and there's like one frame left in Batman's standing up animation and it, the gel disappears. It's so rude. All right, that was really good. It was actually a really good fight. I'm glad I practiced that all day. Um, all right, so now we have the real final boss fight. So the way you fight Titan Joker is you don't just 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 let him do his thing. There we go. All right, well, he jumps away. Some thugs are going to come in, so we're going to blow some of them into the wall with our explosive gel here. And then I'm going to back claw these guys. The walls are all electrified, so if you get somebody into the wall, it takes them out. Very convenient. Good first phase. And then as soon as Joker gets distracted, we're just going to yoink him with the Ultra Claw. And while well, he's stuck in the ground, punch him a few times. And then do it again. Two more times. Just to ignore the fact that Joker got a haircut in between him being not a Titan and being a Titan. Yeah. Yeah. The stylist was available. It's all good. I mean, that happens. You're, you're going to get, you know, get a nice new form. You're going to make sure you're, you're tacky. You're an arch enemy. You're going to make sure you look good for that. Oops, yeah. I mean, this is supposed to be like his grand moment. So, you know. Yeah. Got to look your best. Ugh. Uh, that, that guy in red is a knife guy, by the way. Um, the gimmick with knife guys is you have to stun them before you punch them. Um, there were some earlier, but we skipped all of them. So, <laughs> now you're learning about them. Stuck again, so... Whack him. I like how Commissioner Gordon is just in the background, just sitting there and just yeah. watching the whole thing unfold. Yeah, he's the ref. Yeah. And he's totally unbiased. I think he wants Stroker to win. Probably, yeah. I could see it. Yeah. I'm Stockholm Syndrome now. I'd want to see what happens. Oh, that guy's in trouble. Just got stuck in the wall there for a second. Is that everybody? Seems like it. Okay, so uh, time's going to be when I finish pulling Joker down here. All right. And time. Cool. Nice job. I feel like a really good run. I am uh, very happy with how that all turned out. Did I don't even think anything went wrong. But, uh, God yeah. And, God and Titan fight. Yeah. All oh, right, yeah. That was just, just, to ruin, just to ruin your moment. Yeah. Thanks for that. I Remind you of your failure. <laughs> But uh, yeah, um, I've been chicken. Um, this game's pretty cool. Hope you all enjoyed the run. Uh, if you're interested in running the game or seeing more runs or anything, uh, the best thing to do is go to speedrun.com, uh, find Arkham Asylum. There's a link to the Discord. There's tutorials, all sorts of good stuff. And uh, yeah. So real fast before we go any further, um, is the game, or if this it is on the leaderboards, um, would the leaderboards be RTA? Uh, so there would be, you have to add like six minutes and 40 seconds because of the, 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 sorry. There's like an intro sequence you like skip at the start of the run and it's about six minutes and 40 seconds. Yeah. Okay. But it's, yeah, it's technically still part of the run. So we included it in the timing, but 
we just start at the first fight. Okay, just making sure. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was looking at the time, and yeah. Um, yeah, the run wasn't that good. It was good, but it wasn't that good. Jim, but I have one on the way. In the meantime, if anyone was interested in following any one of y'all for what are for uh, if they wanted to know more about the run, like you said earlier, or just wanted to see any other types of games you speed run, where would they go? Um, uh, like I said, speedrun.com is the best place to go for the game. For me personally, I'm on Twitch. Uh, same username as here, Shika Nuggets. And I'm on YouTube as well. The same name. So, yeah. All right. Moogle, J Games. Oh, I I don't like speedrun too much often anymore. So like the games that I play like are like the really like bad movie games. So don't you don't want none of that? Uh, I stream probably two times a year at this point. So <laughs> yeah, uh, there's no point giving. I mean, it's J Games eighty four, but I I just do not speed you know stream. I mainly watch streams. You'll see my name pop up in plenty of Twitch chats. Uh, any other final shout outs then? Uh, no, I think we're good. All right. Well, thank you all so much for showcasing that amazing run. Do not forget that we still have one more run on the bargain bin. Then she is speed later on tonight. So coming up here in a minute is going to be Eastern Exorcist. A great run. While we get things set up for that, it's a great time to get up, stretch, get some water, hydrate, all of that jazz. And once again, we'll be right back here on the Hot Fix and part of GDQ. Hello, and welcome back to the Bargain Band, a show about speedrunning games all under $20. Just a couple of quick announcements before we get into our next run. Do not forget that Unapologetically Black and Fast is coming up February 11th, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. Make sure you tune in for, tune in for this celebration of black joy in speedrunning. Also coming up next month, Frost Fatales, an event by Frame Fatales, is coming up on February 26th. To see more information about this all-women speedrunning event, you can visit gamesdonequick.com slash framefatales. And of course, if you want to know, if you want to follow what Games Done Quick is up to, just use exclamation mark links in chat for all things GDQ. And of course, speaking of that, we got another great run coming up, Eastern Exorcist with our good friend GL Phoenix. I'm excited for this run. I've not actually seen it, but I saw it in the backups, watched a tiny little bit, and I was like, ooh, this is going to be fun. How are you doing today, Phoenix? I I'm doing very well, thank you, Vinay. It's, uh, it's great to be here. I'm a little nervous getting to show this one off. It's, uh, yeah, it's a game that not too many people know about uh even less people even run it i will say that much but i i'm excited to get to show it off uh i will i will say just before we uh start up the, the method of control that i'm using you can use just regular uh controllers or just keyboard and mouse but for those who are familiar with fighting games this is what i'm currently using it, it works for 2d games it's it, it does the job for me there are a few things that i have to worry about because of it but otherwise it does the job perfectly fine. But anyway, as we're getting into this run, we have these two different characters that we can potentially choose. They're completely different stories. They play completely different. And I'm just going to go with Luke for, for the time being, and we will be starting in three, two, one, go. All right, so Ethan Exorcist, what is it all about? Well, we are, as you may guess, a uh, an exorcist that has to deal with all these various spirits that we have to be trying to get rid of and uh what some of the main mechanics of this game is as you can see as i'm actually just going to be get, taking some hits because i completely forgot what i was supposed to be doing the way to uh get rid of the enemies you have to get rid of all their health and then you have to dispel them if you don't dispel them in time they will respawn and you have to fight them again so ideally finish them as quickly as possible, dispel them, and move on. Uh, we're, we're just going through a lot of the tutorial section right now. It's just going to go through all the various things that combat is going to be showing you. These are slash combos. Really uh, Let's go through the motions so far. Um, 
in terms of how the speedrun ends up going, there aren't too many uh, things in the way of like skips or big glitches to work with. Um, a lot of it is, does just come down to a lot of fight optimization, movement optimization, and just a few little things here and there that that will speed things up as we go through. Get rid of these. And uh, a lot of the, the spawns are very predictable, but what the AI will do is often not. So having to uh, adjust to what the AI is going to be doing does take a little bit to get used to. We just charge to break through these shields. Um, and one of the uh, main things that does add up over time is whenever uh, a combat will end, We'll do that animation where he puts away the sword. You can essentially cancel that by jumping out of it. So uh, ideally, I'd be doing that as much as possible. There's just these little uh, time optimizations. I need to be on that. That will, as I said, add up over the course of the run. You can parry, you can dodge, and you'll see there's uh, an icon, if I get the timing just right on the, the, the dodge or just the parry, that allows you to do a strong follow-up slash, and that's where a lot of the, the damage will be coming through. And now we're just meeting up with a bunch of other Exorcist brothers, well, they're all part of the same school, and these other ones are... They see this fox spirit, they try to kill her, we're just like, no, let her go, she's of no... Threat. What and so they move on, and we are going to be moving on ourselves. Let me just move on. Oh god. The, the, I will say, one of the most annoying parts about this game birds and flying enemies. They can sometimes just get a little bit out of hand and just. They just get very annoying. Just having to wait for them to. Attack. You, you can just attack away, just hack away at them, but it is quicker, just, well, you get the most amount of damage instantaneously just from getting those counter hits. As you can see. Alright, and boss fights do end up. They, they function quite differently. We will get to one rather soon. We'll just have to deal with this last. Birds. It, it does function, the game does function similar to a beat em up where you do have to defeat every enemy on the screen before you can move on. Come on, come on, you're gonna press the button. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alright. Right. So, how this did you find out about screen. the screen? Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Yeah, I, I use the mouse for the leveling up screen because it's easier. <laughs> uh, you were going to say something? Yeah, how did you find out about this uh, game and or run? Uh, I found out about the game because someone I follow on Twitter was like, hey, here's this game that's in early access. And I checked it out, it looked cool. Alright, so, so you, you see there is a shield bar that the bosses will have. When that shield is up, the amount of damage we do to them is greatly reduced. So utilizing uh, parries and dodge counters and slashes to try and bring that shield down. It is the way to speed up a lot of the boss fights. I was too early on that parry. And once you do break that shield, it ends up stunning them, doing a lot of damage, and that's the first boss fight done. Uh, the vast majority of boss fights are like that, where you try to break the shield down, and uh, you just go from there. There are a couple that buck that trend and are annoying in other ways. Um, Unfortunately, we, we see, we, we come back to the camp that we're just at, and our brothers are unfortunately 
It ceased. No. And we have to figure out what on earth just happened. demons, all these evil spirits that we uh, are encountering. Something must have gone on for them to get caught out as such. The game will still uh, be tutorializing us, tutorializing us for a little bit. We're still in that. It's actually the prologue stage. Double up on that. Yeah, this is one of the more awkward ones uh, when it comes to the AI, because sometimes they will just wander off and not really attack me immediately. Other times, as soon as they spawn, they will throw the projectile. It it's very hit and miss sometimes. <laughs> Alright, so the third of the brothers that were with us, we have found him injured. We're bringing him back to the school. And now, essentially, our plan is to uh, simultaneously uh, take the ashes of our deceased brothers and lay them to rest at their original homes, while also figuring out how all this came to pass. This is just a bit of a uh, training segment that you can just skip on through. But first, what a call is a nice little fishing village that has a bit of a demon pulp. And we will be uh, trying to fix fix that, or at least deal with some of it. Uh, another just a small optimization. As I can do that. Can cancel out of the dispel animation once I've already started it, just by dashing. And that is another way that I can just quickly speed things up. And we come to the village, as I've mentioned, of having some demon problems, so they have a Taoist here to try and dispel some of that. Uh, spoiler alert, it, it doesn't fully fix the issue. Um, these two on the left are in for a bit of a nasty shock, and we'll have to deal with that as well. Um, just to talk about the game in general, I mean, one, one thing, uh, when you mentioned, uh, when I asked how I found it, I, when I first heard about it and I looked at it, it was like, stylistically, it looks very nice. As they have a bit of an and, um, and it plays very nicely as well, and uh, being a bargain bin, it's actually not too pricey as well. And uh, for, a, for a fairly recent game, it's quite nice as well. It only came out mid-2021. Uh, if you look on the speedrun.com page, the times there are from when it was in early access. Uh, that was around the times when I got into it. So uh, the game is definitely a little bit more fleshed out since then, so the times are not completely indicative of uh, the pace of the game currently. have to actually that shrine because we'll be using that to teleport back as we navigate our way to uh, the main village where we are going to have to, as I mentioned, help out this village. I know you mentioned about like how it looks, the visuals are stunning in this, like that, that cutscene with a three dimension was really, yeah. really unique for, for this type of style of gaming. Uh, there's a lot of uh, influence from Chinese opera. And uh, there are some of the cutscenes that are very much in the Chinese opera style, which can be a little bit, uh, not necessarily off-putting, but can catch people unawares if they're not used to it, because it's a very particular style. Uh, unfortunately, uh, you, you you can just skip through the vast majority of those little uh, vignettes. And most of them are just uh, little vignettes just kind of describing how a lot of the various enemies and bosses came to be. 
Alright, so... Hey, this little bugger. Make our way through. We have our exorcism arts. There's a whole bunch of them, as you can see. There's a whole bunch there for us to unlock over the course of the game. Uh, for the most part, we are just going to be using these spell blades because they are very easy to use and they deal with a lot of the general trash quite well. Um, just did a bit of upgrading on them right now and you'll see just how nice they can be. As we... Uh, <laughs> are costed by a lot of just trying to get our way to the other side of the river. That fight is, that little segment is, it's just, it's a bit of a crapshoot, you just play it by ear, and honestly that's how a lot of the, the fights can end up going, you just, you understand what the enemies can do, understand where the spawns are going to be, and just try your best. <laughs> Now that I do have these spell, uh, spell blades upgraded, doing the dispel uh, immediately dashing out of it becomes much more powerful because when we dispel something, uh, it just sends out a giant blade. Here's our next boss. This one doesn't have a shield for us to deal with, so we just have to hit it a lot. And it gets really annoying. And sometimes it's just gonna go underneath here and I just have to wait for it to come back. Sometimes it is just going to throw out various waves, but it's been quite nice to me currently. Try and get the waves up there. There we go. Check your hit. Sometimes it is going to sometimes do this, where it's just going to fling a wave at me, where I can't actually interact with them. Fish fiend you dealt with. And it is that going to give us another exorcism fiend. art. Yeah, it, it's well, it, that's what it's called. It's a fiend. It's a it's a fish and it's a fiend. It's rather <laughs> straightforward in, 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 that, in the naming convention. <laughs> um, yeah, we're just sealing away some of that really bad energy. We will be using the shrine to teleport back to the village to let them know that. Uh, we have done the job. Uh, there is a little bit of a side mission for actually talking to that villager again, but ah, he's fine. Uh, we, we do a bunch of various missions uh, in this village. This is all just part of the first oh, chapter. To know. Um, in which it the ending for this village is... Uh, everything's gonna be fine, right? It's gonna be fine. Yeah, everything's gonna be fine. It's a happy ending for the village. Nothing bad at all is gonna happen to that village. Exactly. It's... It, it's all fine. Yeah. Alright, so... I did mention that it is rather... Uh, tough to... There's no real skips, there's no uh, big glitches. Uh, you can navigate around particular fight triggers, like I did right there, if I went forward much more and didn't uh, drop down earlier. Uh, I would have had to fight some extra enemies, and uh, we don't want to do that. Simple. <laughs> you'd, you'd rather fight less enemies. Yeah. Uh, there's a few segments where you can navigate around certain fight triggers. Come on, I can carry that. There we go. Come on. Sometimes, if you're a little bit too, like, if you're right on the enemy model, the parrying can be a little bit finicky. Come on. Ideally, you give it a little bit of space, so it's going to work out just fine. 
I do enjoy some of the music that's in there. That's like good, intense music and very good to the, uh, I guess, nature of the theme of this game. Music is quite nice. It's not too uh, intrusive, I'd say, the music. But it does the job just well. Let's it's subtle, and if... that's good. That's good. Yeah. Sometimes this enemy can be stuck in the ground. There's a few spawns in this game where... Oh. There's a few spawns where some enemies will just be weirdly stuck in the ground. But I have to ideally use the blades to deal with those. Alright. Oh goodness. Is that just random? Like, is, it, is that just like a like a issue with the game? Or is that just like how the game's designed? That it'll just randomly pop in like that? Completely sure. <laughs> uh, if you see the attacks where there's that big exclamation mark, you can't carry those. The best thing to do is to just dodge them. But if there is pretty much any other attack, you can dodge, uh, parry it. Using these jump slashes just to set up a slash immediately after it. Because mansion slashes are some of the best ways to deal with the shields. Slashes and just counter counters in any way, either uh, from a perfect dodge or from a parry. And now we've. Uh, oh yeah, this is why we came here. This person is a an herbalist, or a healer of some kind, because this person is currently unwell. <laughs> And what are we doing here? I, I do know that we have to now find the little girl that had gone missing. But for us to know where the little girl went, we need to talk to this drunk, and he's not going to talk to us until we grab him a drink. So we have to go all the way over to the left. Uh, and thankfully, you don't really use stamina. When you're outside of combat, so you can just dash infinitely like this. Um, and honestly, being on the casual difficulty, stamina is very rarely ever an issue, which is nice, so you can just spam away <laughs> with a lot of moves. Uh, going higher with the difficulties, you definitely will need to worry about stamina usage, and uh, it does create a rather unique challenge. It, it, it's more in like the, the Dark Souls way, where you have to worry about uh, stamina economy. And, uh. You good? Uh. Balancing offense and defense. Right, so we found out that the child has gone into the mountains. Why? We will find out soon enough. Where you're going after. Right, this right here is where we can dodge another fight trigger. After we find these. Let's go here. And that alone skips another fight. S some of them, it it's reasonably simple, but it it's nice to have those simple little fight skips when you get them, when you can get them. Especially for some of those enemies because they can be a little bit annoying because they just armor up. There are some enemies later on that are much more annoying. Speaking of annoying enemies, get down here. Uh, the other character, uh, where she has a much different set of moves, set of abilities, set of everything. Uh, she's better equipped to deal with enemies in the air. I just have to use swords and hope for the best. Uh, Alright, so we have encountered a spirit child in the woods. Always a good sign. As I try and navigate up here. into our next boss fight. Quickly. Not that. Just... 
already. We find the child, but we also find the reason why they were up here. Uh, this. Oh. He's always going to do a laser right at the start. That's a that's a unique pet. Yeah. Uh, as as you can see, the the child that we ran into earlier, this little spirit spirit child we ran into earlier, uh, it's kind of wielding that thing like a mech of sorts. It's kind of messed up. Uh, honestly, the, the game definitely strays towards a lot of more horror and grotesque when it comes to some of the enemies, some of the backstories for some of how the enemies came to be. It's kind of wild. And there's some very interesting and unique designs that say in this game. Are the designs inspired by Japanese lore? You said like the plot and stuff like that was, was for it, right? Um, some of it I do believe is. Alright. And a lot of the, the story, like, the, these little vignettes are supposed to tell you what happened to Amazing. create this situation. Uh, this child was essentially abandoned and had to fend for themselves. They came into the mountains and ended up dying cold and hungry and then evil spirits, yada, yada, yada. A, a lot of really tragic stuff. And this child was not necessarily in ties, but moved towards uh, the mountains to try and help them out. In the end, we do end up helping them out. Anyway, back to the village. Time for the last little segment, and that person, as they woke up, screaming, oh, we're all doomed, because of a really terrible secret that the village has, and that is, uh, they stuck this woman down a well? What? <laughs> That's, um... Yeah, I mean, they, they sealed her away? Because oh. her husband was a deserter from the army, so they took it out on her. That seems a little... rude. Yeah. Don't worry, she gets her revenge. Oh. This is her, this is true. As, as I said, there's uh, some rather... messed up... <laughs> law behind some of these. Alright. A little bit. These. The classic video game thing of, oh, this used to be a boss, now I just have to fight it regularly. Now we come back to the village, and... Things. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah. In a way, they kind of it upon themselves. Uh, yeah. But I, 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 I can kind of see that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the tower was survived, so <laughs> that, 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 that's one thing. <laughs> Yeah. He managed to survive. He's some, like, we're going to run into him more than a few times. He just keeps on surviving these situations where a lot of other people probably wouldn't. Alright, now we have to fight you. He's like, yes, she got her vengeance. Her, her qualms are with this village. That's all. But she's a really evil spirit and we're an exorcist. We got we to deal with those spirits. So we have to fight her. And this fight can be a little bit annoying and a little bit... Sometimes it gets a little bit testy because I have to. Those little I, I... red dots are the things that I need to be hitting. And they're just really annoying. Sometimes it's really tough to see them. Is 
Is there a hair attacking you? Uh, kind of, well, kind of everything of hers is attacking me. So even uh, though I have the game on casual, it is not—it is not hard to end up just dying in some fights. The game will punish you. Uh, okay. You, you can still deal damage when the shield comes back up. It's just reduced. So you, if you get to that low amount of health, it's that situation where it's like. Uh, do I try and just bust down the shield, or do I just whack away and just hope that's enough to push through to the end? Yeah. I did like the dress, though. It, it is quite stylish. All right, so it that is, is the first yes. chapter down. How many chapters are there? Uh, just three. It's Okay. It's not too many. It is a reasonably short game, as the hour 20 estimate may suggest uh i will say the hour 20 is it, i was rather generous with the estimate because at the time uh I, this was prior to finding out a few little extra optimizations so uh i'd be a little bit surprised if i go over 110. okay we'll see how it goes yeah we'll right. see uh, Right, so we've come to the second village, uh, to let's see, ashes of our deceased brethren, uh, and as we're leaving, the uh, scholar there says, whatever you do, don't go into the forest, the, the miasma is just real, real, real wild. So what's the first thing we do? We get baited into going into the forest where the miasma is really wild because we see the fox spirit from earlier. As you do. As you do. Uh, this is where we will find some really annoying enemies. As you do. And they are... As we get into it... Goo people that are going to be falling into the ground. Have to wait for that skull... Really annoyingly, uh, those little skulls that come out at the end, if they hit you, they will seal away your abilities, so uh, all my spell blades will not be working. It gets, gets really annoying. Alright, so the thing about uh, the forest is it's supposed to mess you up. It's supposed to deceive you in which way is up, which way is down, which is the way out. Uh, the very clever way in which this game helps uh, hit you towards the way out is if you can see just the direction of the mist effects, you can see that it's moving towards the left, which means that it is now time to go to the left. And now it's moving to the right, it's time to go to the right after this. After we deal with that's this big frog. That's interesting how it tells you, you know... I would always picture for these type of games, you always go to the right. Mm. So I will be continuing to use these spell blades uh, for essentially the whole, whole run, uh, except for when it comes to bosses later on, because I'll be getting another. Uh, Exorcism art, which is much more powerful uh, when it comes to boss fights. But it, it isn't for a little bit yet. And I will say, uh, <laughs> one, of the, one of the downsides of using the, the hitbox that I'm using currently, I don't have a right stick, so the, the game says, oh, in order to change your uh, arts on the fly, have him equipped and just use the right stick. I don't have a right stick. It, all I have is buttons. Uh, so I just hit, hit a button on the keyboard. 
<laughs> Does the job. Hey, if it, yeah, if it works, it works. I know many who I know many games and speedrunners where you use the mouse only for certain things, or you yeah, know, I have mean, one I'm click on the keyboard. I'm probably using the mouse just to. As these things are annoying. Come on. Uh, using the mouse to navigate through the leveling up towns and stuff like that, so it, it's just another thing to be. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot going on on screen. I think it just the more you play it. The, yeah, I think it like the more you play, you kind of understand, you know all the kind of chaos that happens. Yeah. Alright, now to not screw up. We're screwing that up quite a bit. Uh, oh yeah, I actually level up a bit. Uh, last night. Now into our next boss. A rather unique design, again. The three faced Yasha. Or Raksha. Ow, ow, ow. Ideally. Oh. They send these ice things at me. It's a lot of damage. The shield, special. Also, just be very annoying and teleport away. I do want this upgrade material though for later on. Almost. There's, there's nothing on my health bar. <laughs> there's like one HP left. <laughs> oh. Wait, how, how? I thought we got it the last time. You have to put it in negative HP for it to go away? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it just didn't want to just didn't want to die. It had so much damage you resistance because of the shield or so. What is it? Jeez. It was like it, it was like oh wait I'm finally on I'm finally on the GDQ Twitch channel let me say hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this is a really upsetting looking spider. I I'm not a fan of spiders in general but these in particular are just. Yeah, they're just something else. Also, the empty mask that we got from that boss that just then is the one that we're going to be using for a lot of the uh, boss fights going forward. It's Thunder Control. It does a lot of damage. Was that like a dancing ghost from earlier? Uh... And now, what's worse than those spiders? More spiders? Yeah! <laughs> the same spider, but big! Okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's all. Just big spider, yeah. 
Oh, that's a big spider. Yeah. And the, the story behind them is incredibly messed up. You see how the they kind of look like faces on the front? Yeah. Well, there's oh, a I reason can... for that. It's oh no. Great. Oh no. Um, so what happens when a village has an aging population that they can't really take care of? They just... I'm took them off into the mountains and just left them. Oh. That's... Yeah. It's... That's... Yeah. As, as I said, there's some really <laughs> nasty kind of stories in here. Uh, also skipping another fight trigger by just dropping down immediately. One of the more annoying fight triggers because there's a whole bunch of spiders in that one. So I noticed when you get to like certain save points, there are like a, like a maps for different abilities and stuff like that. Um, like what you kind of like what you're doing now. I assume this is all put like mapped out for the run, or is it just you wait like kind of reasonably just... mapped out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, for for ages, for months, I was just like, I'm just only going to use spell blades because it's it's easy. Just dump everything into spell blades, and then the rest into levels, and you're fine. Uh, it was over the past uh, month or two that I started routing in uh, this. Uh, lightning stance or lightning control. But mostly because of a different fight, honestly. We'll get to it later. Can't tell if the tree's happy, annoyed, sad. Um, or just here to of, educate. Oh no! Wait, it's yeah, a little bit of yeah, a little bit of everything. Just, <laughs> the tree exploded. Yes. Uh, usually you'd have to <laughs> manually dispel it, like we have with all the other enemies. Uh, but thankfully, lightning control has a dispel effect because of the upgrades that I that I picked up. It's really nice, real handy. Wasn't expecting the tree to explode. At least maybe fall down. Alright, so we've caught up with the spirit. And she claims that she had absolutely nothing to do with why our brethren were killed. We are trusting her for the time being. And we'll see how things go. And we're on to the other side of that whole forest nonsense. That part is really, <laughs> <laughs> really something. All right, now, funny thing, uh, when I was first playing this game casually, at this point right here, which she goes, hey, look, Uncle. my first thought was, oh, there's a boop. Oh, um, that's... Yeah. Oh. I didn't. I didn't notice. <laughs> oh, like, oh, okay. Hold on. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then, oh, then I realized. Oh, what do you want me to look at? Oh, that's a person. Oh, that's a person we ran into earlier who was in that cell. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. And now we we saw those people carting off that woman who was. They're trying to ritual sacrifice her, so we are not going to let that happen. Also, this is another section where you see that enemy that's in the ground, and it's really annoying. Please, sir. Please. Please. I don't know. Oh. It, that only started, like, being a thing. It had, like, no HP again. 
Yeah, that only started being a thing when I started speedrunning. <laughs> it's like, I don't... It, it's the only game, when I'm speedrunning. The game knows you're speedrunning, so it adds yeah. an extra, like, invisible 5 HP or something. Yeah. Also, we interrupt the ritual. Now they get sacrificed to this thing. That can't be good. That is not good. That's a lot of hands. That is a lot of hands. I don't know why, but it reminds me of a Malvaro from Final Fantasy. <laughs> does a good job. Yeah. I, for ages I was just using the blaze mm. because it was, I didn't have to think. It, it takes way longer to get through stuff. <laughs> Alright, and now the spirits have kind of whisked away the two ladies that we were with, so we have to chase that down. Now, these things are, can be annoying because they will try and teleport and there's nothing personnel. When, when it comes to like the experience routing for casual, it's pretty straightforward. I've already put everything that I need to into the talents that I want. Um, pretty much at this point, it's all right, do I have any extra experience just to put into levels and any uh, uh, additional talents like extra attack damage? Come on. Come on. What are we doing? Because I'm not too worried about defense or anything like that, because as I mentioned, it is casual. Although, as I also said, uh, things can just straight up kill you if you're not careful. These things are annoyingly too. So, let me get up here quick enough. If I get up here quick enough, this enemy will not fall down. Yeah, if you're too... Well, I wouldn't say slow, but... If you wait too long, they will drop all the way down to the bottom, and then you have to fight them at the bottom. And that's not ideal. Alright, now any good game that looks like Sekiro, of course, has to have a dragon. So here we have a dragon. A nice dragon. He's a little banged up, but that'll buffer out. I'm gonna need a, I'm gonna name it Fred. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Alright, now I just have to do a bunch of platforming to get to the next ring. I had definitely messed up some of it uh, at times and just fallen to my death and had to go back and start it again. Gosh. Not fun. Doesn't and sound this like is it. exactly the fight, which is why I started using the uh, lightning stance. Because this boss does not have a shield. And also, just the blades barely do anything to him. We're gonna be we're gonna be friends, Fred, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. There are these segments where it will just take to not and just be a real nuisance. fly away and I just wait. Sometimes it's nicer than others. It I can usually sometimes get away with it flying away once or twice. This is straying more towards 
the the main amount of times that it's wanting uh, to be untargetable. Like you can parry uh, on some of those hits where it comes in and does that little bite at you, but you can't really do it. Like you can parry, but it doesn't do any damage, which is really annoying. Oh, it's not going to work. You said it. It's like, hey, I'm on the on the GDQ stage. Time to be as annoying. Exactly. As exactly. Oh no. They know. Every boss knows. Oh my god. And he had me. That little HP, throw a Pokeball at it. And I can't even, like, I can swing at them all I want when they come down to do that. It does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I can parry that move, it does nothing. <laughs> so I just have Jeez. to wait for him to come back down. Uh... Wow. Yeah, th this fight can definitely waste a lot of time. Fred, no! I thought we were going to be Fred. No! It just disintegrated. Yeah, things just kind of explode. Uh, with fights like that, I'm glad we have that one point against it. <laughs> uh, you never know. You never yeah. know. <laughs> Alright, so the spirit is introducing us to this fine gentleman who is going to give us all the information we need to track down the person who is responsible for the deaths. We have sent a we have also simultaneously sent a letter to our brother here. Uh he's gonna come after us because he wants to help out. And this is the one text box that we can't actually just go on. Which is weirdly enough, but. Oh, I don't know what this is. Oh, it's just a little bit of 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 a little bit I'm just glad they gave you subtitles. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's also uh, quite a variety of uh, languages that it is uh, subtitles are available in now. So they're updating it uh, with extra languages? Uh, they did update it for quite a while for quite a bunch of languages. I can't remember hmm. how many exactly, but it has also been a while since they have updated the game, but it's perfectly fine standing as it is, I will say. Yeah. Shields. Can you please? Also, these... Gremlins. Crossbows. Oh. Like, I really do like the sound effects, too. I haven't talked about that, but, you know, the, the amount of detail, I think, with, like, the swords and stuff like that. It is very satisfying, just hearing that. Yeah. Uh, that sound every time I do the dispel with the big sword coming out, it does feel very satisfying. Another boss fight. One of the big bad's generals. There's a few of them that we have to deal with. Well, most of this chapter is just dealing with, um, well, Big Bad is King Mandrel and his henchmen. All right. It's, a, it's just a giant cat. Can, can we pet it? Yeah, it's a, it's a giant tiger. Yeah. Can we pet the tiger? This is uh, like a great idea. This is like a great idea. Let's just stop fighting. 
<laughs> Funnily enough, this guy is one of the few characters that exists in both storylines. Because the, the stories are very unique between the two. There's very little overlap between them. Um, but there mm. is a level of continuity. Uh, when when you meet meet that tiger in the other story, he does have that patch of <laughs> hair missing from what we <laughs> gave it to him. I guess we did technically pet the tiger. We just pep, pet the tiger with our sword. Yeah, rather aggressively. Yeah, okay. Still counts in my book. Yeah, it, it works all the same. Yeah. Alright. Now, Fox Spirit kind of went missing, and there was a, I think, a trail of blood. She's been captured. But, it, it's not all bad. It is a bit of a hostage situation, but it's going to be a mutual agreement. Because this guy right here is the son yeah. of the King Mandrel and wants to overthrow him. So we're going to help him. Please, no, don't drop down that. Yeah, uh, a lot of the speeding up of this game is just optimizing fights, really. And just trying to <laughs> not let yeah. them get a little bit out of hand. Okay. Looks like it. We do end up avoiding a few fights by just taking the high road here. Oh, so avoid fights for taking the high ground. Mm hmm. Alright, now, what do you think is going to be the next general that we have to fight? We fought a tiger, we fought a dragon, we fought spiders. Now, I was not going to say that. Looks like an ogre. Yeah. It's a rhino. Oh, it's a rhino. Not expecting that. I was going. I was expecting a um, giraffe. Huh, that that would would be interesting. Yeah. That one doesn't get to stay the yellow story. They just get exploded. Yeah. Once again, it just explodes. Yeah. I mean, well, that's how the spelling works, right? Also, there's the towers to get, and he's still just hanging around, <laughs> somehow surviving all these <laughs> situations when there's so much death around them. He's like, oh, well, <laughs> yeah. I'm living. <laughs> all right. We will have a couple of fights before we get to our next boss fight. It does end up being feeling almost a, like a boss rush towards uh, the end here. You do get a decent amount of them. Uh, the, some of the fights in this segment can be rather annoying though. Come on, what are you doing? Oh! Ah. oh. Like a fighting Sometimes. giant reindeer with, uh... With one of those weapons, I totally forgot what it's called. Check. What are you doing in the floor? <laughs> Dude! Oh wow, it's just what? I don't know. Oh my god, it, it literally Ew, that oh, went no, deep okay. in that floor. I was like it just went under the under the ground. Ah oh, yes, a play off. Thank you. 
these wolves can be quite annoying. They are very persistent. And they act. And they will just keep on poking me. Ow. Hey, stop it. To that, I guess. <laughs> All right. Let me just level up. Well, actually, I have enough of that. You just so get like to the next five levels there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up is again probably not going to guess it. it. It is probably one of my favorite designs in all of this game. I think it's incredibly unique. Someone said earlier that we haven't seen a turtle. We haven't. Oh, it's a bard. Well. Or is it like Medusa because of the hair? It's kind of a centipede Medusa something. Okay. Centipede Medusa that also knows how to play an instrument. Yeah. <laughs> As I said, it's one of my favorite designs in this game. It is a really, it is a really cool design, yes. But she died very quickly. That's Aww. how a lot of guys are supposed to get her. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. We have a few more screens worth of uh, just regular enemies, which can get very annoying because we have more of those wolves. Yeah. Okay, kind of just. This one on the, on the back is throwing bombs, and it's kind of tough to see sometimes when the bombs are coming when everything is going on. <laughs> Some enemies will only spawn once you defeat a certain amount of enemies. So it's just. Learning the patterns, learning uh, where they spawn, when they will spawn. And uh, just do your best. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had a chance to really talk about this. Like, I know we've talked about like how like, the, how beautiful the artwork is in like, some of the bosses, on some of the, you know, the like, three dimensions, the character design. Like, massive props to this, like, the background of all that I've seen is the atmosphere oh, yeah. of the entire area. It's all just very, very beautiful. Yeah. Also, that previous screen was the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, this one is usually much more of a cakewalk. Uh, although, ironically, last night I did end up dying on this screen because I ran out of potion. <laughs> oh, no! Uh, and I had to do the previous screen again, but we got through that just fine. Oof. And now we just had two boss fights back to back. And we should be done with it. There's just King Mandrel. Uh, some of the boss designs on the other story, uh, they they get a little they got a little bit more wild with it because this this story was the uh, was the main one uh, going into early access and the other story the other character was essentially um, put in for the full release so it was down the line after they had a lot of data a lot of, lot of feedback about the game that. They were able to finish out the uh, the story, so it seemed like after the main story, they're like, "All right, we can probably get a little bit more wild with some of the designs," and they sure do. Yeah, really. 
I right. also thought that was a shaman at first. It kind of makes sense. I'm gonna get a little bit annoying because uh, I'm trying to like parry or dodge some of these uh, blocks that are coming my way. I just end up just being right in between all of them. And nothing <laughs> you just like hit the field goal. We were so close. I guess if they, yeah, when, when they don't vanish, they just fade to black, then that just basically means we got a cutscene coming up with them. All right, and now we do have one more piece of business through the. Whatever's going on with this little uh, artifact, we find out that uh, the brother those that we sent the message to, he's the one who sold us out to King oh. Andrew. So he's the reason that our brother died. And yeah. so they do end up catching up with us. And we're like, we know that you sold us out and all that kind of stuff. And he's like, fine, we'll, I'll, I'll go back. <laughs> but, yup. Yeah. Tried to pull a fast one, and now we have to fight him. Yeah. Oh. And the time is on the final hit. And interestingly enough, uh, he has a lot of the same moves as we do. Because we are all from the same... Uh, no, we're from the same school of Exorcist. So it makes sense. Oh, and that's time. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, he kind of it just explodes. Oh, wow. I didn't expect it to be that fast. Yeah. Uh, the, the boss fights end up becoming pretty straightforward. Um, once you get to... Uh, when you get that lightning stance all powered up, it's, it's very good at just deleting bosses very quickly. Yeah. That was a great round. I really enjoyed that. Um, so if anyone was watching this, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people who in chat who were like, I really love the the aesthetics of it. I really want to know more about like this. Maybe they're just interested in picking up the game in general, or there may be someone like, ooh, this looks like a really good speedrun for me to get into. Then you know, there's a lot of people saying like it's like a 2D Sekiro. So if they're into that, that may be a good, you know, way to get into it. How could people be interested to learn more about the speedrun? I, uh, as I mentioned, there's like not really many people who's been running this. There's like me and like one or two other people that were running it back in, um, back in early access. And so, uh, just message me if you want. I was, say, I was gonna say I was gonna follow up with I was gonna follow up with that with with. Okay, well, if that's the case, maybe they should just follow you, and then they can, sure. you know, you know, follow you. So where could they follow you specifically, so that they can see more about like maybe this or any other runs or anything else that you do? I, I do uh, a decent amount. Oh, also, the game gets very loud in the credits. Um, <laughs> it, it's a very nice sequence, but it does get quite loud. Uh, follow me at Geo Phoenix. I'm usually Geo Phoenix everywhere. On Twitter, I'm Geo Phoenix underscore. So that little bit of extra detail but yeah i'm just geo phoenix you can find me there most nights i'm usually on at really dumb hours uh my time i'm australian so dumb australian hours is usually bad hours for everyone else so uh it, usually for the dj crowd uh i'm on at good times but yeah i do speed run this i speed run um a lot of pokemon games a bunch of pokemon games uh i did and a bunch of people can attest to this. I put so many hundreds of hours into Sekiro randomizers. I will get back to it eventually. It's always a lot of fun. But uh, usually, yeah, you can find me at your Phoenix. Um, that's where you'll find me. All right. Uh, any other final shout outs? Anything else finally you'd like to say? Uh, not, not all that much, really. But thank you for having me on. It's, it was a lot of fun. And... Uh, I'm just happy I got to show this game off. 
because I, I think it's a, a, a gorgeous game and I think it's a crime that not, not many people uh, know about it. Yeah, I'm glad I got the chance to see it on the uh, the backup list and just was like, oh, I, I, I want this on my show. So thank you so, so much, uh, Phoenix, for showcasing that. Uh, that will, in fact, do it here for the bargain bin, but don't worry. While the bargain bin may be shutting its doors for tonight, we have an amazing, amazing show coming up next called She is Speed. They're going to have, I believe, Okami HD, I believe is what it is, and 102 Dalmatians. So we're going to have a fantastic showcase coming up next. Stay tuned. This is a great time to get up, stretch, get some water, hydrate, use the restroom, do all that while we get the transition going from the bargain bin to She is Speed. Stay tuned. We will see you all next time. <laughs>